Hi again, everybody. Okay, so this is series two of my chicken. <laughs> so what I did the other day with the whole fryer, once it was done, like I said, I removed all of the breast off of the, um, the carcass. And I made, um, the first night we actually had just roasted, just the chicken, just the roasted chicken um, with some veggies on the side and a salad. We kept it simple. The next day I used the extra shredded chicken meat um, on my salad and I just kind of did a savory salad where it was tomatoes and carrots and spinach and purple cabbage and then I had some marinated beans that I put on top and some um, different kind of uh, fermented uh, veggies. I really like fermented veggies that I make here at home and that'll be another segment um, and I topped it with that and um, just kind of kept it simple the next day as well. Um, I did have some, uh, I still had some leftover chicken that we used that night actually in our dinner to where I did brown rice bowls. And so I layered it with brown rice, um, broccoli, sauteed spinach. I think I put some kale in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> put some kale in there, um, some garlic, some onions, kind of sauteed that all together um, along with the chicken, put it on top of brown rice and then basically put some lemon juice on top of it. Um, as well as some uh, fresh feta, so that was really good. So that chicken fryer turned into three different meals in which I used just the white meat. Um, the rest of it, what I did, and this is basically what I was gonna go over as my segment two, is making bone broth. So in my crock pot, which is right behind me, um, I basically put the entire carcass in there once I was done taking all the meat off of it. And like I said, I don't eat dark meat. If you guys do, you can make a ton more meals out of it. Um, you can freeze it. I often give it to my dogs sometimes mixed with brown rice. Um, I went to my vet, he said that was totally fine, so I'll use the dark meat that way as well. But what I do with the bones is I put them back into the crock pot. I cover them with about 12 cups of water. You don't really have to season it or like a traditional broth, you don't have to put veggies in there or anything like that because um, the bone uh, itself will actually flavor the broth and you let it simmer and you have to let it, it's very low and slow, that's the, that's the rule on bone broth. So it's at least six hours, but you can do it up to 24 hours or beyond, just depending upon what your choices are. I often do at least 24 to about 36 hours, and I just leave it in my crock pot, I leave it on low, and I let it do its thing. Because that way I know that it's breaking everything down and it's getting the collagen into the stock, which is really what you want. So let's talk about bone broth. Um, so it's kind of... I don't know, it's pretty, um, it's pretty cliche right now, um, but the benefits that it offers are real. So it aids with digestion, um, immune system, it boosts that. Um, it also basically develops um, an additional, there's a non-essential amino acid and non-essential just means that our bodies already create it and it's glycine. And the bone broth basically produces that as well. Um, and so you're basically consuming that. There are studies that show that our bodies might need some outside help with that, but since it's non-essential, your body does create it, but it kind of gives you just a little bit more. So the main benefits are gonna be aiding with digestion, um, and like I said, as well as the immune system booster. The collagen is really cool to help basically hair, skin, nails, and things like that. So you just kind of get an all-around benefit. So if you're gonna be making soups and you're gonna be using broth, even if it's boiling your brown rice or anything like that, I would recommend using the bone broth. So what I do once um, it's completely done is I love mason jars. I use them all the time for everything. Um, I don't cook with plastic or keep things in plastic. So mason jars basically take, um, take, the, price, take the place of um, like a plastic to go container. The other thing I like about them is that you can actually take these and you can microwave them. Um, I wouldn't heat up plastic. So this is always my go-to. So I have jarred one thing of bone broth. As you can tell, it just looks like a traditional broth. So it's not gonna look any different, um, especially if, if you have kids or anything like that, they're not gonna be able to know that bone broth is any different than regular stock. And I get the self-sealing mason jars. So what I do literally is fill it up when it's nice and hot. So be careful because you have to wrap a towel around it. Um, I basically seal it good and tight. It's hot. <laughs> um, and then basically I wait. And what I wait for is I wait for um, the lid to kind of uh, seal for me. And I'll know that because I'll hear a pop. So it kind of sounds like this. Hopefully it comes through okay. Nope, it doesn't, there's no sound to it. But you'll hear basically a pop. And so what'll happen is when the seal is sealed, it'll, um, it'll basically make a sound because it's, seal, it's self sealing. 
Um, you can keep these in the refrigerator if you want to. If they seal properly, then you can uh, go ahead and just keep them in your pantry. You can also get a pressure canner if you do a lot of canning, um, and the pressure canner will basically force the seal to take place. That way you don't have to wait or listen or wonder. But what happens basically to the lid is on top there's some give to it when it's not sealed. It kind of has like a little bit of a bounce to it. Um, there will be none. It will be completely flat and there'll be no give to it whatsoever. Um, it's like a little button, I guess, is the best way to describe it. So follow the uh, instructions on your canning jars if you have any concerns about it. Like I said, invest in a pressure canner. Um, bone broth at the store is really expensive. Uh, it's so easy to make at home. You don't have to pay that. So invest in a pressure canner if it's something that you're concerned about, but I recommend making your own bone broth anytime that you can. I recommend making homemade everything anytime that you can. But this is going to be my soup starter. So I'm going to um, go ahead and can and jar everything, and then the next series is when I'm going to be making my soups, and I'll go over how I do that as well. So look out for that video, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. I'm getting a lot of views on my YouTube channel, and it's fun for me. So thank you, and have a Merry Christmas, because I'm not making soup before Christmas, but I'll see you afterwards. Thanks. Bye-bye.